we are going to cover our last topic in Unit 1, which is literal equations. So my learning targets, I will solve literal equations for a specified variable. I will use a formula that has been solved for a specific variable to determine an unknown quantity. So my definitions, what is a literal equation? A literal equation is an equation that has more than one variable. So there are tons of equations that have more than one variable, but an example that I picked is A equals pi r squared, which for those of you that know what that means, that means the area of a circle is equal to pi times your radius squared. Not something you need to know in this case, but if you wanted to, now you know. The second equation, that, or I'm sorry, the second definition I want to talk about is a formula. A formula is, a, is an equation written in symbols that is used to describe relationships between different quantities. So this guy right here, he is a literal equation. He is also called a formula. He is the formula for the area of a circle. So let's start with some super simple examples. Okay, so my super simple example would be this guy. Yes, that is a B. Don't freak out. He's okay. It's 4x plus B equals 12. Now, for literal equations, they are no different when we solve them from regular equations. What we need to think of in our head, pretend that that b is something else. It doesn't have to be an 8. I just picked 8 because of the fact that he looks kind of like an 8. But pretend that he's any other number, 12, 7, 500, whatever you want him to be. But he's a number. What would we do first if he was a number? So, if he were a number, if it said 4x plus 8 equals 12, well, I would know that I have to subtract 8 on both sides. So when I subtract 8 on both sides, it would look something like this. But now remember, this is pretend. We're not actually doing this in our head. What we're actually doing is we're doing it with b. Now notice, I did nothing different. I just changed b to say, or I changed 8 to say b in its place. Again, nothing changed. I still subtracted 8, just like I'm subtracting b over here. So we pretend like it's the exact same thing. So since 12 and b are not like terms, where over here they would be, right? This is 12 and this is 8. They're both constants. They can go together. But 12 and b are not the same because 12 is a constant and b is a variable. Those cannot go together. And since they cannot go together, we just write them side by side. So when we write them side by side, we get 4x equals 12 minus b. 12 minus b. I did not do anything fancy to him. I just wrote him on the other side. Now again, let's pretend for a second that this b is an 8, or let's pretend like this b isn't even here. If he wasn't here, how would I get x by itself? I would divide by 4. When you divide by 4, you're actually doing the exact same thing, even with b being there. Don't let him freak you out. So when we divide by 4, the 4s over here will cancel. So when this guy goes away, notice this says x equals 12 minus b over 4. That's exactly what my answer says over here. There is nothing different. Let's do a couple more examples to get a better feel of them. Plus, they're all just a little different. So let's talk about this guy right here. This does say cx minus 10 equals 5, uh, equals negative 5. But again, we're going to pretend like the c is not even there or pretend like the c is a 2 or a 0 or whatever you want him to be. He's just a number. Don't let him freak you out. So for right now, I'm going to cover him up. This just says x minus 10 equals negative 5. I need to get rid of the negative 10. So just like last time, I'm just going to add 10 to both sides. We're not going to let it freak us out. So negative 5 plus 10 gives us 5. Now again, I'm pretending like this C is not here. Technically, he would be done. But since he is there, we have to think of him as something else. If we think of him as a 2, if it said 2x equals 5, how would I get x by itself? Well, I would divide by 2. In this case, it's the exact same except for it's c. So we are going to divide by c on both sides, and we get that x is equal to 5c because these two c's will cancel out. Notice when I cross them off, it just says x equals 5 over c, and that's exactly what my answer is here. What about this one? Negative 3x plus d equals 9. This one's very similar to the, or the question that we just did in example 1. We are going to, again, pretend that D is anything else. He could be a 12, he could be a 9, he could be a 540, he could be whatever you want him to be. But he's there. One way that I like to explain it is that this is you and then everybody else is friends. This is you. You want to be by yourself. You are not feeling good, you're just wanting some space. Well, the first person that you're always going to want to get rid of is the annoying friend. The annoying friend is always the guy that's plus you or minus you because he doesn't always have to be there. Sometimes he comes along, sometimes he doesn't. This guy, however, is your best friend. You guys are stuck to the hip all the time. You're never apart. But you need some space. 
So the first person that you're going to get rid of is your annoying friend, just because they don't have to be there. So since he is a positive D, you're going to subtract D from both sides. Just like we talked about last time, this is 9 minus D. 9 and D are not like terms, so we're going to write them side by side. Now remember, this is still you. You still need some space. You love your best friend, but you just need to go away. You just need him to go away. And the only way that you and your best friend can go away is if you divide yourself from each other. Now this is negative 3 and negative 3. Those guys cancel out. And just like last time, if I cross them off, you have 9 minus D over negative 3. And that is your answer. Now, we also have ones that are just a little harder, just a little. They're not much different. They just look a little funny. This guy right here, don't freak out. You don't need to know him. You just need to know that all of these are different variables, even this guy versus this guy. If you really want to know what this is, this is an equation for velocity. But don't freak out. This is velocity. This is your initial velocity, your acceleration, and your time. So we need to get A by itself. This is U you need some space. Your best friend is T because you guys are conjoined at the hip and this guy is your annoying friend. The first person that you're going to kick out is always your annoying friend. He is a positive annoying friend so we are going to subtract him over to the other side. V and VO are not the exact same so we write them side by side. This is you. This is your best friend. You still need space from your best friend. So you're going to divide yourself from your best friend. When you divide from your best friend, you are left with that you are equal to V minus VO equals T. One more. This one looks a little confusing, but it's not too bad. It wants us to solve for R. So you are R. You are underneath everybody. First off, you don't ever put yourself underneath anybody, ever. You are always on top. You're the queen, you're the king, you're whatever you are. You're not going to let anybody put you down. So you are going to multiply yourself to come back up, okay? Because that is the only the way that we can get us out of the denominator. We have to pull ourselves back up. So notice that it cancels out on the right side, but we bring him in on the left side. So it's okay that he's there. So my new equation looks like this. Now, remember, this is you. Now notice you don't have any annoying friends. You don't have anybody plus you or minus you. You just have two people that you have conjoined at the hip. So maybe this time you have two best friends tagged along. Well, you still need some space. You're kind of upset. You were down here as a denominator. You didn't like it. So now you just need some space. So you are still going to divide yourself, but you have to divide yourself from both of your best friends. You don't want either one of them there right now. You just need some space. Those guys would all cancel out. Even this S, this S would disappear as well. It's kind of hard for me to do that. There he is, just a little bit, but that S would cancel out as well. So now you've got R equals D over 2S, and that is your answer. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to come schedule a time for tutoring.